What an awesome joke. Sorry, I couldn't resist. We're going to talk about internal resistance. Now, this is important to know because our theoretical battery here, you know, which has these, you know, I'll call these the terminals, you know, this end and this end right here. We just normally draw a battery like this. It's not a very realistic battery. And that's because the battery has its own internal resistance. Okay, so it's going to be something, you know, the, the, it's going to sort of eat away at some of those volts if we talked about it, like with my analogy that I was using before. So let's consider then we've got a few different things going on here. We've got, uh, well, the battery, what it's trying to do, we're actually going to call that epsilon here, this EMF. It looks like a backwards three. And we've got this one here, which is a little mini R, so we're going to write it with a lowercase r. So what is this? Little r is the internal resistance of the battery, so that's measured in ohms. But what's this electromotive force? That's what EMF stands for. This, so this epsilon means EMF. And in the IB, at least on exams, you're often going to see it used just EMF like this. And it stands for electromotive force. You think, oh, great, force is in newtons, right? No, that's really, really important. It's in volts. So I put this here as exam tip right here, right? Is this first one. EMF is not a force, okay? It's a potential difference measured in volts. That is really important. Okay, so what I think of it is this. I think of it as like the battery's trying to put out something. Maybe like the battery's trying to be a three volt battery, but the problem is it doesn't actually act that way, right? So, so it's maybe trying to be a three volt battery, but of course, in this resistor, it eats maybe you know one volt all the time. So in in reality, it's actually a two volt battery, even though it's trying to be a three volt battery. I like to think of this. It's it's like there's uh, some internal resistance. It's like a middleman, you know, who's you know taking a cut of the profits or something like that in a business. So we have an equation that helps us for internal resistance, and it goes like this. It goes epsilon equals I times big R plus little r. Okay, so this is in your data booklet, which is nice. And let's just remind ourselves, electromotive force, it's not a force. It's actually measured in volts. Okay, we've got I, which is the current, and that'll be measured in amperes. We've got R, the resistance of the whole circuit. So in other words, there's you know this, this whole equivalent uh, resistance here. That'll be measured in ohms. And then we have a little r, the internal resistance of the battery. That's also measured in ohms. And don't forget, okay, maybe I'll just write this down. I'll say remember. Uh, we need to remember, for example, it's going to be important, I think, to know you know Ohm's law, V equals IR. I think that's going to be important. Anytime we have an I times an R, that's actually a voltage or a potential difference. Now, what am I going to do? I want to open up this equation. So what do we mean by that? I'll take this epsilon then, and I'll say, well, it's going to be I times R, you know, this one here, I times R, plus it's going to be I times little r, if you understand that. All right, and then what should we do with this? I'm actually going to rearrange this for IR by itself. So I'm going to say that means IR equals, um, and if I got rid of the plus I little r, that'll go to the left side, so it'll be epsilon minus little i, uh, sorry, i times little r. Now, why did I bother writing this down? Well, it turns out this right here is a really important formulation because these, remember, anytime you have an I times an r, you have a voltage. You have something that's measured in volts. So let's take a look. Do you see this IR? Well, that's the overall, you know, that's the overall result of the battery right here. That's actually what you end up getting. Okay, so you, that's what you get, and that's measured in volts. Remember, I times R. And that's just the potential difference across the terminal. In other words, if I had a voltmeter from here to here, I'd be measuring that entire thing. That's basically the useful volts. But what's this epsilon? Well, remember, that's what the battery is trying to give you. So that's what the battery tries to give. But uh, this one right here, this IR, what's that? Well, that's actually the potential energy that's lost, right, by this little internal resistor. And hey, if that's what's lost by the internal resistance of the battery, that's also voltage. So it's like we have volts equals volts minus volts. I think this one to me, although it looks weirder, it actually makes more sense, right? It's what you end up getting is what the battery tried to get minus what was eaten away, so to speak. Okay, so we have a, an example now. We have a circuit consisting of 10 identical 5 ohm resistors all connected in parallel. Good luck drawing that. I mean, I could. I could try, I guess. So I'm going to have, for example, uh, okay, something like this right here. And then I've got a resistor. So this will be, for example, a 5 ohm resistor like this. And I've got another one, for example, like this. Another 5 ohm resistor. And I've got another one. 
and I've got another one, another one. Basically, I'm sad. I don't want to draw all these. Okay, so what can I do? Well, I mean, the question, the part A is actually nice. What's the equivalent resistance? Well, we have to remember, okay, if they're all in parallel, what do we do? Well, if they're in parallel, remember, we can use this equation for parallel resistors. That 1 over RP equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus dot, 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 right? If you have more. Now, in this case, then, let's see. I have 1 over RP. That's going to equal, well, it's going to be 1 over 5, because it's a 5 ohm resistor, plus 1 over 5, plus 1 over 5, plus dot, dot, dot. And I'll say that's how many times? 10 times. Well, that means I can simplify my equation, then, for myself. I can say, therefore, 1 over RP must just equal, let's see, it's going to be 10 times 1 over 5, if that makes any sense. I got 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5. I got it 10 times. So I may as well just say, what's well, 10 times 1 over 5? Well, it's just 10 over 5, which is 2. So that means I have 1 over RP equals 2. Now, I've got to be very, very careful. That's not the answer. That's not my equivalent resistance. That's what 1 over this is. This is like a 2 over 1 right now. And if I want RP by itself then, remember what I do for that, I have to flip the equation. If I have to flip the 1 over RP, it means I have to flip 2 over 1, becomes 1 over 2. Therefore, the total equivalent resistance then is going to be just, well, what's 1 half? It's just 0 0.5, let's say. So I'll say 0 0.5 ohms, and there we go. So it wasn't super obvious. That's why I thought, okay, it's important to start with this one here. Okay, fine. Now, we're given any, uh, another question now for part B. The, we're told the internal resistance of the battery is 0.1. What variable is that? That's lowercase r. We're told EMF is 6 volts. Ooh, that's epsilon. And we want to know what's the current at the battery. We want to know what's I. So we need an equation that relates I and R and epsilon. And we do have that. Right? It's our equation for the internal resistance. It goes epsilon equals I times R plus R like this. So let's actually just put in what we know. Uh, actually, no, let's maybe just try to rearrange this and solve. I think that'll be better. So I'm going to try to get I by itself because that's what I'm looking for. So if I want to get I on its own, what do I do? I can say that I, the current, is going to be just equal to epsilon divided by R plus R. So I'll write that down maybe. So epsilon over R plus R like this. All right, well, let's actually do this. Do I know all these numbers? It turns out I do. What's epsilon? It's 6 volts. All right, what's R plus R? Well, the total equivalent resistance is 0 0.5. We found that. Plus, let's see, what do we have here? Little r, and that's 0 0.1. Well, what's 6 divided by, uh, let's see, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 is 0 0.6. And let's see, 6 divided by 0.6, that's just 10. So I'm going to get 10. So that means then my total current at the battery, in other words, right along the battery up here, if I had an ammeter right by the battery, I would measure a current of 10 amperes. Okay, so now we have a part three, which is what's the potential difference across the terminal? What do we mean? Well, remember that uh, we can, let's just try to draw this circuit here. So that means we have this you know, internal resistance right here like this. And actually, just I'm going to draw this a little bit lower this. We have this um, EMF right here that's coming out of this. We have this internal resistance right here like this. And we've got this. And now keep in mind, what else do we have? We have, well, we found a total equivalent resistance here. And we found that from before. That was 0 0.5 ohms. So in case we need it, there we go. And we also know, by the way, we know all these values. We know epsilon and we know r. What are we really asking for? We're asking for, hey, if we were going to measure from here to here, in other words, we had a voltmeter right here, measuring from this end to this end, that's what we're wondering here. Because we already know the EMF, and we already know the internal resistance, but we actually don't care. What we really care about is, hey, if we want the potential difference across the terminal, that means we want V equals I times R. In other words, if we want this potential difference, we need to know the current times the uh, total equivalent resistance. Now, do I know the current? Well, yes, I do. We found that from before. It's 10 amps. And do we know the total equivalent resistance? Yes, we do. It's 0 0.5. So 10 times 0 0.5 is just 5. So that means this right here is just 5, uh, let's say, 0.0 volts. So this is our answer right here.
So I thought I would write this down. So C, if you look at this right here, well, what's going on? Remember we had this epsilon right here, which was 6 volts. So what's happening here is this. It's trying to put out 6 volts at the terminal, but the problem is this internal resistance is sort of taking away 1 volt. So 6 minus 1 ends up with 5 volts. So you know, there's only 5 volts that's remaining for the whole rest of the circuit.